Hey friends, Chris again. What we're doing today is we're going to configure DDWRT so it has a virtual LAN. And the reason I'm doing a virtual LAN is so I can put some untrusted devices on my network. So very briefly, here's the concept. I have a, an older router, a Linksys E4200, on which I have DDWRT firmware installed. It has four LAN ports. I want to have the first three LAN ports set up so that these represent my main network. So they're going to be running on subnet 192.168.1x. And this is where I'm going to put all my trusted devices, like my laptop, my iPhones, everything on my network, basically, is going to go on this network. But then, of course, we all have these devices that we don't really trust. You know, like security cameras from who knows what manufacturer, devices that never get any security updates. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to devote LAN port number four to a new subnet called 192.168.107x. And I have a switch that I attach to that network so that I can distribute that IoT network uh, hardwired out if I need to. But I'm also gonna set up an IoT Wi-Fi signal so that my untrusted devices have something to connect to. Now here's the thing, I don't trust these devices, so I don't want them to be able to communicate with anything on this side of the picture. Of course, everything on this side of the picture is trusted and should be able to communicate with things in the IoT network. But really, the only thing the IoT network should be able to do is make it out to the internet. That's what we're going to do. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to point out is I am connected to the DDWRT Wi-Fi. This is the default Wi-Fi that the router is configured with right after a factory reset. Now, the reason I'm connected to the Wi-Fi and not hardwired into the router is because I'm about to configure the ports on my router. I might lose connectivity to the router uh, if I screw something up. So I'm just connected to the default Wi-Fi. All right, I'm just going to pop over to setup just so you can see the basic settings on this router. So notice that uh, the main router's address is 192.168.11. Of course, that's where I am right now. And then as I mentioned, we're going to set up a secondary LAN on 192.168.1071. So how do we go about doing that? If you go over to switch config, now this is a little bit of a confusing screen. What this is trying to show is this is all the ports on my router, okay? So this is my, my WAN or internet port. And these are my four LAN ports. And right now I've got nothing connected to any of them. But on the side here, these are the VLANs or virtual LANs. And right now all of these LAN ports are all on the same virtual LAN or they're on the same network. Now I wanna take port four, I'm gonna unclick that. And I'm gonna put it on its own VLAN. So it's gonna be on VLAN two. Okay, this is not the only configuration we need to do here. I'm going to go to the bottom, save, bottom again, apply settings. All right, so I created VLAN 2, but that's not enough. I need to be able to configure it. So that's in the networking tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new bridge. And we will call it BR1. The rest of the settings you can just leave alone. So we'll scroll to the bottom, save, and then we will apply the settings. All right, so we have a bridge. What we need to do is we need to go to this assign to bridge section, say add. And okay, this has happened to me a few times. If this happens to you, you might just need to force it to reload back to 192.168.11. I've navigated back to network. Remember, assign to bridge. I'm going to click add. Okay, so now I can take my new bridge, bridge one, and I can assign it to VLAN two. So basically these bridges are a way to configure things connected to them. We're connecting VLAN 2 to our bridge 1. That's going to allow me to introduce my IoT configuration for my second VLAN. I've done that. I'll go down to the bottom and save and then apply settings. All right. And after I've applied the settings, you should see in your bridging table, BR1 should say interface VLAN 2. If it doesn't, you might want to go and reload this screen. All right. So I had to refresh it. I come down and look, BR1 is set up for VLAN 2. If you remember, VLAN 2 has my fourth LAN port on it. Now we have to actually configure this BR1 so that it's on the subnet that we want. So what we do is we scroll down a little ways, and in this network configuration section, you should see network configuration BR1. And we're going to give this a label, IoT network. And then right here is where we get to say what the subnet address is. So we'll call this 192.168. 1071 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Okay, so we'll save that and apply settings. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to make sure that uh, we have a DHCP server that can actually hand out addresses on the 107 network. 
So what you do is down here, there's this multiple DHCP server thing. Click add. And this is fine. This is DHCP on BR0, which is the default bridge. We can just leave that alone, let that exist. But we need to add a second one. So here you see I'm going to set up a DHCP server on the IoT network. I'll save that and apply my settings. Okay, so right now my IoT network should be working. I could verify that by plugging a network cable into port 4. Before I do that, there is one thing I have to do for this particular router. As I mentioned, I have a Linksys E4200, and I have not had to do this with other routers, but for this one, for some reason, as soon as I create a VLAN, these other LAN ports stop working, 1, 2, and 3. And what I found I actually have to do is I have to move these from VLAN 0 to a new VLAN. So I'm going to move them to VLAN 3. So as I said, you may not need to do this. Okay, and once I've moved them to VLAN 3, we have to go back to the networking tab, go to the assign to bridge section, and we just need to select BR0 and say I want VLAN 3 on my BR0. So I want that third VLAN on the default bridge. Save and apply. All right, so right now my port configuration should be set up. Let's test that theory. So I'm going to plug my laptop into port 4. If we go back to the diagram, we should see that anything I plug in port 4 should be on the 192.168.107 subnet. All right, I am apparently connected to a wired network. Now I'm going to, I'm going to verify this uh, from my terminal. ifconfig is what you can use if you're on Linux or on, on a Mac. On Windows, you can use ipconfig. So I'm looking for my Ethernet connection. And if you notice, it has been assigned 192.168.107.131. So that's pretty good news. That means that I actually am on the 107 subnet. Now, what about my other LAN ports? They need to be handing out addresses to 192.168.1 something. So I'm going to try connecting to port 2. I'll run ifconfig again. All right, and I'm on 192.168.1.131. So that's great. It looks like my port configuration is working. Now, as we mentioned back in the diagram, I want everything from the 1 subnet to be able to see stuff on the 107, but I don't want 107 to be able to see anything back on the 1 subnet. The only thing 107 should be able to do is get out to the internet. So how do I do that? In order to ensure that, we need to configure the firewall. So that's done in administration, commands. Now, I happen to have these instructions that I got off a very helpful person on a forum. These are the magic words that I will paste into the video description. But essentially what's happening here, this is the key item that we are going to drop connections from bridge one to any other bridge. So that means bridge one or the IoT network cannot see anything on any other bridge. So what you do is you say save startup. So that's going to run on startup. So I'm plugged into port four. I'm just gonna double check that I have a correct port assignment. And I should have full disclosure here. I rebooted my router just to make sure the firewall settings would take effect. So as you see, I'm on the 107 network. If I try and ping the one network, look at that, I get no response. And that's because communication from my IoT network to my main network is completely shut down. I'm going to go and reconnect to one of my other LAN ports, like LAN port 1, so that I'm on the main network. And I will double check. Yes, I'm on the main network. So the only thing left to do is set up the IoT Wi-Fi so that anything connecting to my special IoT Wi-Fi will end up on this IoT subnet. It's actually pretty easy to do. If you go to the wireless section of the router, if you scroll down a little ways, there's this Add Virtual AP, Add Virtual Access Point. So you click that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this DDWRT IoT. And I just want to point out that this specifically is on the 2.4 gigahertz radio. I can go and do this again on the 5 gigahertz radio. I'd add another virtual AP. But I'm just going to do this one just so you see how it works. The thing you need to pay attention to is this. This virtual AP is assigned a name. It's WL0.1. Okay. Yours might be different. You need to pay attention to it. So I've created this thing, save, apply settings, 
And then what we do is we go back to setup and back to the networking section. And all it is is just another bridge assignment. So we want to put something new on the IoT network. We click Add. I'll select Bridge 1. And now notice WL0.1 is in my list. So that's the new virtual access point that I created. Select that. Scroll to the bottom. Save. Apply settings. Now, of course, if you're doing this for real, you're probably going to want to go into wireless security. And, of course, you can set the security mode on your new IoT network, and you'd probably want to add a password to it. That's how you set up a VLAN on DDWRT. I found it kind of difficult to figure this out. Uh, I hope I helped you in some way. If I did, please give me a like. That's going to help me a lot for, with the YouTube algorithm. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you on the next one.